Well, check your wallet. Someone bought a winning lottery ticket in Spokane Valley back in January, and they only have two months left to claim their $200,000 prize. And I didn't even know what to say to Kurt. I just said, this is probably one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. A company that went out of business donated hundreds of pairs of shoes to help kids in need. Another beautiful day here in the Inland Northwest. Now we're tracking more cloud cover, cooler weather, and a chance of showers later this week. I'll have your full forecast next. A statement by you which reads, I engaged in sexual intercourse with her initials while I was employed as a teacher at the school she attended at the time she was 16 years old and I was 37 years old. Did this happen in, in Spokane? Yes, sir. A Mead High School teacher admitted in court today he had sex with a student. Wesley Perez pleaded guilty to sexual misconduct with a minor. Welcome everyone, thanks for joining us. I'm Jane McCarthy. Good evening, I'm Mark Hanrahan. The 37-year-old initially pleaded not guilty last year. Creme 2's Amanda Rowley was in the courtroom today when that teacher changed his plea. About a year ago, detectives began investigating Mead High School Spanish teacher Wesley Perez for having a sexual relationship with a student. Court documents say the two met at a camp and an anonymous letter to the school's principal is what prompted the investigation. In May last year, Wesley Perez was charged with sexual misconduct with a minor and communication with a minor for immoral purposes. He initially pleaded not guilty to those charges. Today, he admitted to having a sexual relationship with the student. But as part of the plea deal, the state dismissed the second charge of communicating with a minor. A statement by you which reads, I engaged in sexual intercourse with her initials while I was employed as a teacher at the school she attended at the time she was 16 years old and I was 37 years old. Did this happen in, in Spokane? Yes, sir. In an interview with detectives, the victim said she and Perez exchanged phone numbers and Snapchat information when they met at a leadership camp. The anonymous letter sent to the school principal about the relationship alleged the two would meet in his classroom before and after school, but eventually another teacher confronted him about their visits. According to court documents, Perez told the student to deny everything about their relationship. He even told her he would go down fighting if they were discovered. To make this plea freely and voluntarily. Yes, Your Honor. Judge Moreno said the maximum penalty for the crime is five years in prison. Perez will remain in custody until his sentencing on June 28th. He's been on administrative leave from Meade High School since April 24th last year. We reached out to the Meade School District to confirm how his employment status will change, but have not yet heard back. Amanda Rowley, Creme 2 News. One, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> well, Spokane County broke ground on a new state-of-the-art medical examiner's facility today. For 20 years, the county leased space in Holy Family Hospital and administrative space in another building nearby. They say both were too small and outdated. This will be a uh, state-of-the-art, the newest medical examiner facility in the Pacific Northwest. Right now, our, uh, our doctors, Dr. Howard and Dr. Aiken, uh, provide services to 11 counties in northern Idaho and uh, northeastern Washington. And that's a big challenge and a big task. Spokane County is currently experiencing a backlog for toxicology screenings. Right now, the medical examiner has to send their lab test to Seattle, which takes months. Well, today, Washington became the first state in the country to offer a public health insurance option. The plans are supposed to be up to 10% cheaper than private insurance. They will be available to all Washington residents of any income level by 2021. Lawmakers approved the measure last month. Governor Jay Inslee signed the bill into law this afternoon. Well, it's weather now. After more than a week of above average temperatures, we're about to head back to reality. It's time. Rain and more seasonable temperatures moving in. Hi, Tom. Yeah, it looks like we'll see the rain showers developing, at least in the Spokane area. Maybe Wednesday night, better chance of Thursday and Friday. In the meantime, still a bit above average temperatures today. We saw highs in the low 70s. We're still at 71 degrees. We've got a lot of filtered sunshine, high clouds out there right now. Uh, and as you look at the forecast overnight, because of the mostly cloudy skies in the overnight 
overnight hours. It should keep our overnight low actually pretty mild with a low of only 52. 72, the expected high uh, under mostly cloudy skies again on Tuesday. And then as we look at the temperature trend over the next seven days, you get the idea we're seeing the cooler weather setting up. We're at 65 on Friday, about average for Saturday and Sunday, and then low 60s for that following Monday. I'll give you more details on this with your seven day forecast coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Tom. And tonight we are launching an investigation series called Think Twice. It's aimed at protecting your family from the most common crimes. Convicted criminals told us how they ripped people off, and we're sharing that information to help you think twice the next time you're in a car. It's still happening. Every four seconds, someone becomes a victim of theft. This is how Danielle Shelton says she did it. One of my friends that um, I used to hang around with, it was his garage, you know, he worked on vehicles. And so I just went and opened the door, it was unlocked. Tip number one, when you drop off your car for service or repair, ask how it will be secured. The victim wasn't there because he was waiting on his car to be fixed. And I stole a uh, checkbook out. They were sitting in the console. As soon as I looked down and seen that lock was open, I opened the door and grabbed him and left. She noticed the unlocked car. Okay, that's really obvious, but it is what the criminal says tipped her off. So lock your car, close the windows, do all the other basic things like park under the lights or where plenty of people are around. Take out anything that's valuable. Even the criminals tell you this stuff. Make sure everything's secure. It's about more than what's lying around your car. Thieves can tap into your phone contacts, your banking info, and more by hacking into all those newer features in cars, like your voice to text function or a streaming music account that's linked to your car stereo system. Step up your game. Change the preset password on your Bluetooth. Older cars without those fancy security systems are a lot easier to break into. And if you have a new Nissan Altima, Honda Civic, or Toyota Camry, your car is on the most stolen list, according to the National Car Insurance Bureau. But you don't have to get high tech to stay safe. Get a protective window treatment from a detailer that makes it harder to smash in your window, and a motion detector alarm that's more sensitive. The biggest mistake is assuming your stuff is safe, even if you're just running in for coffee. It's not that you don't know how to stay safe. Sometimes, it's really just about making an effort. Put your purse in the trunk, checkbooks in the glove box, make sure everything's secure. Some good information there. Well, back here locally, the shoe store Runner Soul has closed after two decades, but they are still helping people find good shoes. The store donated their remaining shoes to Teen and Kid Closet, an organization that provides clothing to teenagers who are in foster care, homeless, or in need. Having enough shoes that fit can be a challenge, but not this summer. Amazing. But we're going to have to figure out an actual shoe rack. We're going to have to convert ourselves into a shoe store right now, you know, to, to be able to accommodate all this. It's great. And, you know, back to school is a big time for us. Well, he says they donated at least 600 pairs of brand new shoes. The kids can pick out exactly what they need for free. Love that. Yeah, fantastic.